today's lesson we're going to adjust this photo to be done on wood if we take a look at this photo you'll notice that it's fairly dark in nature the suits dark there's a lot of dark shadows in it and thus we need to lighten these areas up the problem that we're normally going to have if I use the contrast enhancement is that 10 we're going to end up blowing the white areas out trying to adjust the dark areas and if we take if we go up to the to our adjustments and we adjust and we use the contrast enhancement if I right click on the image I can zoom out you can see that as I try to just reset this if I pull this slider left you notice here I start to lose my detail in the face even though the dark area is still relatively dark it's not really making much of adjustment because this setting here really only affects the lighter values in the image. I could go to my gamma of adjustment if I wanted and I can slide a little bit this way but again we're typically losing our detail in the middle. So you can see as I adjust I'm actually getting a lighter image. And this works fairly well but for this lesson what I'm going to try to use is I'm going to try to use the tonal curve. If you go to effects, adjust, and we go to the tonal curve, typically I'm going to try to use this this tool instead of the contrast enhancement. So what we have here in the levels command is we actually have a 45 degree angle running from one corner in this case the bottom left hand corner up to the top right hand corner you notice that we have some the darker areas of the photograph are down here in the bottom left and the wider areas are up here on the far right anytime that I pull this image up what I end up doing is I lighten the photograph up let's just zoom out a little bit so you can see and if I pull back down again, I darken up. If I pull this image down, I end up making everything that much darker because as I slide across here, I'm pulling it darker. So let's bring this back up again. Typically what we want in a tonal curve is some sort of a nice curve like this. And then we want to slide back down like this. So you notice what I've done is I've actually not lost my white variance. So if we get rid of let's get rid of that area there, bring it back up again. So if I go back up to what it originally was, notice how my area here is is fairly white, but it might be blowing out a little bit too much. And again, if it's too dark, you can see what ends up happening. I'm going to bring it back down and what this is going to do is it's going to bring my tones a little bit more evenly spread out across. I'm going to slide up this way a little bit more and you notice here that I actually am lightening up my dark area. Now what you could also do in the case here is you could actually bring this value here up. And let's zoom out a little bit. Again you can see that his shirt is a lot better in terms of the detail that we can see. And again, if I want, bring this up a little bit more if we want. Now I've got a little bit more detail now. We can see in the left and the right side of the face. If we want to lighten that face up a little bit, we can do that. Again, normally I like to have a little bit of whiteness in the in the face to add some contrast. And what we've done here now is you can see that I've got a fairly good even tones around the outside. I might even be able to bring up the dark tones a little bit more here. So now what I've got is a fairly good rendition of my image. This is sort of what I want. I can say OK. And you notice now you can you've got some details showing up in his shirt not perfect but again I can't blow out 
can't lighten this up too much because if I do too much then basically what's going to happen is I'm going to lose some of the area here. If I undo this you can see that I've got actually let's actually let's copy that Let's paste it. Let's move it over. So let's go Control Z, 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 and then Control V. So there's my previous and there's my lightened image. Again, I've got some pretty good, I've sort of gained back my detail on the right here. And if I want, I could actually go through with my my tools here to lighten this up if you want to do that so maybe the dodge and burn tool might be good just to sort of lighten up my area along the side of the face here but I think for the most part this is a pretty quick adjustment that will work for me actually get rid of the original one Actually, let's leave the original one here, and we'll take a look at the adjustment on both of them. But what I'm going to do now is, normally what I'm going to do is go to Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. I've got pretty good detail here. You may want to slide this this way a little bit, just to slide to adjust the image a bit more. Don't worry about the harshness of the photograph. Again, as I've always said, removing detail on a photo that we want to laser engrave is going to actually increase the detail when it's, once it's done. Say OK. Again if we did this one and we ran the same sharp and unsharp mask here and we slide it up. You notice we've got too much darkness here. That photo will, will engrave way too dark. This photo is a lot better because we have a lighter image. My final test that I have to do on this basically my final effect on this is to come through, click bitmaps, mode, black and white. And again, Stucky typically, you can use any one of the Star of Stucky or Floyd Steinberg, whatever you want. And then just say OK. And if we get our zoom properly, let's see if we can get our zoom here. Let's get it to 200. Maybe a bit more, 300. There you go. A little bit more indicative of what we're going to get in terms of the image. That should give us a fairly good image for what we're going to want to have on our plaque.